You have reached your destination. Yep. Hi there. All right, in this segment, I'm hoping to kind of chronicle what I did to pull the uh, the car apart and to show you what I what I discovered. I discovered a lot of rust. Um, some oddities about the car, some things I learned about the car, and just how deeply I got myself into a lot of work. A lot of work. You look at the right front uh, driver's side, right side, right side passenger side, um, footwell, and uh, that's a wood wood floorboard. I took that up with a, with a with a claw hammer. There it is. <clears throat> I couldn't get any of the captive bolts or anything else to undo, so I could just lift out the boards and reuse them. And I plan to, you know, do some custom work on some marine grade floorboards anyway. So, who cares? I left that uh, that rear panel there, and I opened up what I saw, or what as I saw, as a lot of work on the frame, a lot of work. You can see at some point somebody had nailed carpeting to the frame, dulled it down, not glue, but uh, you know, carpet nails. I found that all over the place. And I found a lot of rust, a lot of rust. At uh, one point, at a future episode, I will have shown how I had this thing sandblasted and just how much rust there was. I did a lot of uh, repair to the car before I took the body off, so I didn't take the body off in two pieces. Um, <laughs> and you can see a lot of rust, a lot of rust. Hadn't take out, hadn't taken out the engine and transmission yet. And there's the uh, left side. Again, a lot of carpet nails. A lot of carpet nails used directly into the frame. I don't understand that. Um, and a lot of what you're looking at there, I had to replace, fabricate, weld in, and just redo a lot of that. A lot of that. Now, mid screen there, you'll see a, a split in the uh, middle there. I had to repair that too. Uh, I think that was a uh, an artifact of some uh, some rear end collision. And uh, looking through to the left side of the trunk, you can see the hole that I had mentioned in a previous episode. Um, a lot of rust on, a lot of surface rust on a lot of what I've uh, since taken off and put back together. There's the uh, rear end. A lot of stuff on the garage floor. Uh, I'm more or less looking at the uh, at the state of the uh, the rear end and and the amount of rust, surface rust that was on that thing. And I agree. As I started moving things out of the engine bay and out of the interior, um, <clears throat> I had uh, I pulled out, or I discovered really what I found was a hole in the, uh, the heater bay shelf. I didn't understand what the heck that was. I now know that it was um, a hole cut out at one point for a, uh, a right-hand drive car. Um, I've since covered that up. I left that as it was and just put a cover plate over it, and. Uh, I had thought that at one point I might convert my car to a right-hand drive, but I've since walked away from that. And uh, again, you can see a great deal of, of uh, surface rust and corrosion in the engine bay. And moving into the front valence, quite a bit of rust. I at one point tried to kind of save this thing, and... Uh, it was too far gone. Um, at some point, somebody had uh, had hit it or mashed it, bent it back into shape, tried to repair it with some Bondo, of all things, and uh, I said to hell with it. Um, I ended up just putting that thing in the trash. And as I pulled off body parts, I left them in the garage and hung them up on my wall, uh, trying to give myself some space to work with. Um, doors, fenders, the whole nine yards. Uh, there's the car with the fenders off. Again, some surface rust, but not too bad. This area wasn't too bad, actually, in terms of the body tub. Surface rust, big deal, that comes off with a uh, flapper disc. However, however, that's just a prelude of things to come. Uh, that body stiffening portion there uh, was rotted out. I took the entire thing off. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the fenders as well. The fenders had been welded, had been brazed to the... Uh, the outer rocker portion of the uh, of the car and to the A pillars, which is what you're looking at now. Um, I used a blowtorch. I used my angle grinder. I used a Dremel. See the silver, the uh, the gold portion in the center of the screen. That's braze. I had to pull all that apart and keep the fender because I wanted to keep the original fender <clears throat> size to the car. And um, yeah, there's the uh, 
left side there. That left side had a lot of rust, as you can see. I spent a lot of time, a lot of time, trying to undo that, pull things off. In some parts, I just said hell with it, took my angle grinder and cut it all out, and uh, polished up the, uh, the uh, vertical surfaces as best I could for new bits, and call it a day. A lot of rust there. From what I've read, Abington didn't do a great job on rust proofing the cars, nor did they paint uh, these interior bits, and they rust from the inside out. Yeah, that A pillar there, I didn't replace. Didn't need to. Both B pillars needed to be replaced because of the uh, rust, and you'll see that here in just a second. Here are the fenders, uh, the front ones. Uh, a lot of surface rust on the interior, but not too bad, I thought. Until I started to really dig into them, and you'll show, you'll uh, see that in a different episode. A lot of surface rust, and some work I had to do there. A lot of work I had to do there to uh, <clears throat> pull out a lot of rust. A lot of rust. This one, as you can see right where my hands are, had a couple of patch panels, one right over the other, and bondoed so it looked natural to the car. Uh, that presented a hell of a challenge that I, I overcame, but it took me quite a while. Patch panels and welding and some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of rust there. And the left uh, left side shut face panel and the rear fender. That rear fender wouldn't come off either. It was uh, welded to the the frame, to the body, to the shut face, and to the outer uh, outer rocker on the uh, lower portion there. That took me just about a week and a half to get done, bit by bit, um, <laughs> with a blowtorch and my angle grinder and Dremels and picking tools and all kinds of stuff. Like I said. I wanted to save as much of the car as I could for originality and for fit. I knew that you know, it, it all fit together and uh, I'd read that sometimes if you buy aftermarket or if you buy somebody else's panels, you aren't sure what you're getting and they may or may not fit. So uh, Look for the gold. Uh, the gold bits there are all brazed welds that somebody had put in, in the past after this thing had getting hit or damaged or, uh, or rusted out or something. In subsequent episodes, the entire outer rocker that you're looking at there, I more or less cut out with my Makita, my angle grinder, and I replaced with brand new stuff. Um, in another episode, you'll sh see that uh, the piece I bought, I coated again and again and again with a lot of acrylic, uh, acrylic paint uh, so that uh, whatever water did get in there wouldn't create a, a hazard or a problem. I wish, now looking back on it, I would have uh, shown the video of me with the blowtorch taking off Bondo and paint and junk and bits. You can see a patch panel put there in the center of the screen there. Um, and uh, there's the uh, there's the left, I'm sorry, the right side. Same thing. I had a lot of a lot of work ahead of me to pull all that stuff apart. Again, it had been welded and brazed together. Um, uh, yeah, that was a tough one to overcome. Now there's the right side B pillar and uh, the frame there. The frame was pretty poor shape there on the right side. Um, I ended up cutting out the uh, the other rocker on that side too, on the right side, so I could replace a bunch of metal. And once the body came off, that frame was frame was something else. I'll tell you what. Once the right side rear fender was off, I got a really good look at what I was after and what I was in for, and you can see quite a bit of rust there. Quite a bit of rust. Uh, you can even see some of the dust sparkling in the uh, in the screen there. Um, yeah, I had to wear a respirator plus gas or gas mask, paper masks, and the whole nine yards. So a lot of that had to come out. A lot of it did come out. All of it came out, and uh, got replaced with new stuff. Um, to include that B pillar, that B pillar plus its uh, its stuff had to be taken out bit by bit, slowly and methodically, and replaced with a new one. Um, new parts for these cars aren't hard to find. Uh, there's all kinds of outfits from Moss to Scarborough Fair to uh, Metal Mickey and a couple guys in San Diego that I used uh, that that uh, <clears throat> make these parts. All of that. You can see all that rust there from inside of it to the outside of it to everywhere. I couldn't save that thing. 
couldn't save it. So it all came out. And because of this, I was forced to uh, teach myself how to weld. I was forced to teach myself how to, you know, to be patient, frankly. Uh, I'm not a patient man by, uh, by nature, and I freely admit it. And having to go through all of this, I uh, taught myself patience and how to go th through things bit by bit and with a lot of research. I've never owned an MGA. I've never known how to or what to look for on these things, and so this was a journey of discovery. So there's the fender off, and you can see that at one point there's a lot of rust that had been patched over. You can see that I can pull it right out. That's awfully easy. And I ended up having to put a patch panel on that entire thing. Uh, you know, grind off the entire bottom portion of that, weld on a new one, and uh, and go from there using the same fender. Um, surface surface rust there, quite a bit of surface rust, and quite a bit of work I had to do that I'll that you'll see in a subsequent episode to repair this fender. Ugh, it was a pain in the ass. And the left side B pillar uh, was in much much worse shape than the other one was. Uh, this one came apart in pieces. Um, a lot of oxidation, uh, salt, and rust inside that thing and throughout. There's no way I would even want to try to save that. And you can see where I'm pulling bits and pieces off of it without um, done any, you know, doing any prep work to it. Um, quite a bit of rust. And I don't mean to complain about the rust. I don't mean to complain about the car. Um, any older car that's not gone into a restoration like this is going to need a restoration like this. I've had a lot of fun with this car, honestly. Um, getting into my garage where it's you know, 50 degrees or upper 40s, <laughs> my cat's milling around and trying to help, and uh, me grinding things out and fabricating and coming up with pieces, and it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Now, there's a piece of the A pillar coming off. I'm sorry, the B pillar. <laughs> And again, a lot of rust on the outer rockers. Uh, this is a, uh, an endemic problem with MGAs. It's a pretty common problem with MGAs. And the same goes, if you've not replaced that, then you're going to have to. Or if it's not been replaced in the past, it will need to be. Uh, you can see the red that the, uh, the car was uh, when it was, uh, you know, when, it, when it left the factory. The white that was in the uh, previous episode is, uh, is a respray, and uh, the red was the original color. And pretty much every time I got into the garage, I had a helper. Uh, that one I got on a station in the Middle East. I brought him home with me. Um, you're looking at the uh, at the rear fender again, and again all the all the rust, a lot of rust. And that one had a had a uh, a repair patch panel as well that I had to cut off and uh, and replace. You can see that somebody just brazed over old stuff with new stuff, and uh, it rusted. It rusted and turned into a. Uh, a ball of hair for me. Yeah, I'm tapping the uh, tapping the fender, looking for rust bits, and hearing hollow thunks as I hit it with my uh, my uh, my wrench there. And again, more and more and more rust. Quite a bit of it. Ugh, look at that. Yeah, that's the left side. Uh, left side had a lot of. Actually, the left side was much, much more uh, rusty than the right side. Um, not that it mattered because it all got cut out and replaced. So here's the car uh, with the bumper off. Uh, the bumper took a while to come off. There's the interior uh, with the floorboards out and some of it cleaned up off my garage floor. The front valence with a lot of rust on it ended up throwing away. <laughs> Another front valence picture with some Bondo there on the floor. And the front of the front valence that was in pretty sad shape. Uh, hood. And fender where, the, where it meets the body. Um, a lot of fender issues. You can see some Bondo there that got uh, you know used as a uh, repair. Uh, another uh, rear, uh, rear fender. And the car without the front fender. A lot of uh, rust there. Inner fender. A lot of rust. Lots of rust and where it was brazed onto the car and the outer rocker on the right side. And some damage there. I'm not sure where that came from, but I've, I, I've since fixed that. Uh, again, you can see some uh, some brazing and some welding there. Uh, a lot of brazing and some welding. The car came as one big piece, and I had to pull all of it apart. 
Why does it work there? B pillar on the right side. Um, there's the ooh, right side, I think. Right side again. A ton of rust. All that got repaired and replaced. Replaced and replaced. Period. Yeah. The Narshi blows lots of rust there. Like I say, repair pieces weren't uh, too awfully expensive and they were easily found. I found them on eBay and through the different forums I'm a part of and word of mouth and so forth, heater assembly. And uh, <clears throat> finding them wasn't tough. Uh, the inner portion of the heater assembly, um, the heater shelf, lots of work I had to do on that one. There's the uh, right side. <clears throat> the other rocker is removed, removed again. <laughs> a lot of rust uh, still there. Uh, nice picture of a cathedral almost. Uh, atmosphere. The carpet tax used to hold the carpet to the body. And what I had to work with. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, next episode should be uh, some of the repairs I'll be doing with the car and some of the other actions that I've had to do to, uh, to make the car right to be pulled off the frame. So, again, thank you, and uh, next time.